pocket fountain pens are a really unique kind of fountain pen in the sense that you could argue they're really better suited for everyday use compared to your regular fountain pen. However, in my opinion, what makes a great pocket pen really sometimes differs from what makes a great regular fountain pen. So with that in mind, I'm going to compile this list of my favorite pocket pens and hopefully help you in your journey to finding your next favorite pocket pen. So, why would one choose a pocket pen, right? Well, they have a few advantages. Of course, the first one, I mean, come on, it's right in the name, right? It's a pocket pen. So it can fit in your pocket, it can fit uh, in places that are easy to carry things, and it's, it's not as big of a hassle to carry around as a regular size pen. And that's really the reason that it's more useful to use as an everyday pen. And really with that in mind, I mean, come on, they're just fun, right? They're just a lot of fun. And that's really one of the other driving factors behind pocket pens is that, I don't know, they're cute, they're diminutive, they're, uh, they're just a lot of fun, they're unique. However, that uniqueness does bring some drawbacks. Really the main drawback of most pocket pens is that they really don't have a lot of options for filling systems, right? Usually it's either just cartridge or cartridge and eyedropper and really nothing else, right? So that is somewhat of a downside, and that is where I would like to give an honorable mention to vintage fountain pens because there are a lot of smaller vintage pens with a bunch of different filling systems, but that's such a big and diverse world of fountain pens that that's really out of the scope of this video, and I'll cover it sometime in the future. However, most modern pocket pens really are only cartridge or eyedropper, and eyedropper is kind of finicky and cartridge there isn't a lot of colors. So that's really the only thing you got to keep in mind as a, as a big disadvantage for pocket pens. And this next point is that pocket pens really do have to be well thought out in terms of how they're used and how they feel in the hand because it's not just like you unscrew the pen and start using it, but you got to post the pen and make sure it's weighted correctly when you're writing with it posted. And that's really not something you have to worry about in a regular pen. So that's just another thing to think about is that design really plays a huge factor in how good a pocket pen can be, even more so than in a regular fountain pen. So with that in mind, now let's get into my list. This is the first one right here. I picked this up at the San Francisco Pen Show last year, which, that in mind actually, I'm going to be at the San Francisco Fountain Pen Show this weekend, which is cool. So hopefully I'll see you there if you're going. But anyways, this is the Small Tem made by Shown Design. It's a pocket pen that's made in Old Tem, which is a super, uh, a very sturdy plastic. It's in a, a very interesting natural color. Um, and it's, it, it feels super cool in the hand. This specific pen, you can either use a cartridge or there's already a built-in O-ring and the uh, threads where the body attaches to the grip section so that you can eyedropper it without any sort of worry. Uh, which I have it eyedropped right now, as you can see. Got that ink flowing around in there. This is honestly one of my favorite pocket pens uh, that I've been using for the past year now. Uh, and yeah, let's give it a writing test. The nib on this one is actually a... Uh, Naginata Togi style grind done by CY of Tokyo Station Pens also at the San Francisco Pen Show last year. It's a fantastic nib uh, and I'm, I'm a big fan of his work. This is also a Yovo number no. 6 steel nib which is nice to see a relatively large nib and a pocket pen of this size. It's just a, a cool little another bonus for a pen like this. And then the ink here, I believe this is how you, uh, here, here I'll show you. The ink is Waringool Architecture Infinite Cube. Now that is quite the name, but this is like a lovely sort of brown maroon ink that I've really been a fan of in the recent weeks. And then as for the uh, Naginata style grind, you can see lower writing angles gives a slightly more architect grind, whereas if you raise up the pen, you can see it's much more of a fine line. And that sort of uh, is a gradient from low angle 
to high angle. Pretty cool. So yeah, that is the Shown Design Small Time. The next pocket pen on the list is another pen from Shown Design. This is the Shown Design Pocket 6. Ian Shown really sort of has the mid to high level pocket pen market cornered, I gotta say. He just does fantastic work. These pens are amazingly machined and the designs are super cool. This one is also a San Francisco Pen Show pickup. Um, and it's got the uh, sort of special uh, <laughs> ribbed style grip section which sort of goes over the nibs, not quite a hooded nib sort of situation going on, but something close to it. And I really like how it, it offers a little more versatility in terms of style of grip. Now this one, uh, because it's metal, it's not really eye dropperable, so your really only option is cartridges. So I have a diamond blue velvet cartridge in here. But as you can see, just like a small tem, the cap simply screws onto the back real nice and easy, and it makes a nice full-size pen to write with. I gotta say the the dye mine ink is a little watery because I did flush this. I flushed these pens out just before this video, and there's a little bit of extra water in there. That's the sort of thing with the cartridges is you gotta wait for the ink to sort of flow through. Another disadvantage and why I'm not a huge fan of cartridges, um, but you know, <laughs> it's it's not it's not a, a fatal flaw so to speak. So yeah, that is the Shown Design Pocket 6. It's another favorite of mine. Really uh, one of the best pocket pens out there in my opinion. It's really about as small as a pocket pen can get while still using a number 6 nib, which is a really good size nib because really there's not a lot of space left for that cartridge there, you can see. And then the cap is just about as big as it can be for that nib to barely fit in. So yeah, not only is it a great pen, but it's got a great design is something that's really valuable in pocket pens. Okay, so this third one is a bit of an outlier, so to speak. This is actually the Moon Man Wonkai Mini, which is a sort of similar yet stouter, like sort of fatter design compared to the Pocket 6. It's the same sort of screw on the back. Um, I guess same as the small time as well. However, this one I've actually put in a, a Pilot Parallel nib into the grip section because it fits perfectly. So uh, the nib that came with this is okay. It was sort of like a number five size steel nib. It was fine. But uh, the nice thing about this Moon Man is that you can add a Pilot Parallel nib to it, get a sort of um, uh, pocket parallel, so to speak. So uh, yeah, uh, I've been sticking with this nib in here for a pretty long time and I've really enjoyed it. So that's the Moon Man Wong Kai Mini, a little bit of speed gothic calligraphy there, so to speak. The nice thing about the parallel is you can also write on the side. So this ink, I believe, is... Kiwi Inks Nebula Space Kitty. It's a sort of shimmery and sheeny deep green blue ink which uh, yeah I'm, I'm a fan of and you can also sort of try and write normally with this parallel but uh, it does not work out well <laughs> I tried <laughs> but yeah this is a great sort of unique option if you want a sort of pocket parallel um, and yeah I highly recommend it so this next one is actually a gravitas you know, I forget actually what this one is called. I'll put it on the screen here. 
Um, but this is a pocket pen from Gravitas uh, that I've picked up a while ago, um, mainly for the color. I mean, just <laughs> that's really cool, the, the way it sort of shimmers and sheens like a oil slick, pretty much, the nice rainbow color. Um, and that is, I believe, from Ben Walsh, who is a pen maker out of Ireland, um, who I think is actually also going to be at the San Francisco Pen Show, fingers crossed. So, um, but yeah, this one is uh, slightly larger when uh, sort of in normal writing mode because it, it, the cap posts on the back of the pen relatively in a shallow manner. So that nice and long cap provides a, a good size. You know, I've made a pretty good guess because this is actually called the Gravitas Pocket Pen. in Rainbow Skittle. We also have another instance here of not being left to completely uh, dry out the feed of the water I used when I was cleaning it, but, uh, you know, what can you do? <laughs> this one is also inked with a diamond blue velvet cartridge. And it also has a Yovo Steel number six. Personally, I'm a really big fan of this sort of uh, trend of using uh, Yovo number no. sixes in pocket pens. I think it's honestly a, a great nib size for a pocket pen compared to using, say, a number no. five or something smaller, uh, which they also have their place, but I don't know. It's nice uh, to use a sort of standard nib size in a pocket pen. It's, I like the novelty of it. So there you have it, as we get the sort of sunlight coming in here, which is, uh, we'll take it, I'm in Seattle, so sunlight's always welcome. Um, but that is the Gravitas. Uh, the one thing about a sort of posting pocket pen is sometimes, in my opinion, it feels a little loosey-goosey, um, even if it is actually secure when you're writing with it in the hand. Um, that's just a personal preference, though. You know, some people do prefer posting as opposed to, like, sort of screw-on posting. Um, but yeah, that, that I leave entirely up to your preference. Personally, I prefer screwing on the cap to the end of the barrel, but uh, yeah, I'm still a big fan of this pen. Now here we have something pretty cool, pretty special. This is a recent edition. This is a pen that Goldspot Pens kindly sent to me as a, a limited edition that's out with them right now, uh, which is the Opus 88 Baby Beluga. It's got a super cool um, ocean-themed design uh, with whales and... Uh, seaweed and coral and waves and I, I am a sucker for a blue pen I gotta say so I'm a really big fan of this one um, the link is in the description if you want to go check it out uh, and yeah thank you to them for sending this along uh, and it, it sort of gives you an okay size without posting the one problem I've experienced with this pen is it doesn't really post that well I'm not sure if you're actually supposed to post it or not so I've been using it unposted and uh, I mean, it fits okay. It just barely reaches the back of my um, sort of knuckle palm area right there. So it is fine to use. It's not like I'm using it like that. Um, but I do wish I could post it. So that's the only downside to this pen. But I, I mean, come on. I love that design. <laughs> the one thing is, this is an eyedropper filler. This is just a, a traditional Japanese style eyedropper. So you always got to screw the back before you start writing, which is always something that I forget to do. So keep that one in mind. But this is honestly a really cool style of eyedropper because it's you've got the sort of plug that you have connected to the back of the pen to where you can feel a little more safe that it won't just spill everywhere when you're not using it. So that's good. And this actually has a, uh, a Yovo 1.4 millimeter, oh, <laughs> millimeter, <laughs> uh, number five nib. So it's a stub nib, um, not 1.5 like their number six nibs, but 1.4. Uh, and I'm a fan of stub nibs. 
I've always liked them. They sort of add a little extra character to your writing. So, yeah, I've really been enjoying this pen, i got to say. And the ink is a favorite of mine, which is Sailor Yamadori. It's just, oh, it's, it's probably one of the best teals out there. It sheens beautifully when you lay down enough ink and then just, oh, that color. The, uh, the camera certainly doesn't do it justice or it doesn't, uh, doesn't give it that, that special pop that it really has in person. So I'd highly recommend getting this one if you have the chance. The ink and, and the pen that is, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I love the expressiveness that a stub nib can provide. Uh, so yeah, what can I say except I'm a fan of this one. This next one is a really interesting specimen that I've really been enjoying using recently. This is a pen by Tom Studio, which is in the UK, called the Studio Pocket Fountain Pen. Aptly named, I would say. Uh, and they were kind enough to send me this one. It's a very unique design compared to other pocket pens. It's got the same sort of posting mechanism, but instead of just friction fit posting, it's got two little O-rings there, both to hold the cap when it's actually capped and when it's posted. So um, that sort of long cap that can go all the way on because of those O-rings um, gives you a really, really nice size when it's actually posted. Uh, this is also a, a cartridge filling pen and no odd dropping just like the uh, Gravitas because it's metal. However, um, yeah, I, I do have to say I really enjoy this one. Um, it's it's a well thought out design, and uh, yeah, thanks to them for sending it my way. And also, I believe they use steel nibs from India. I'm not specifically sure of the maker, but India does make great fountain pens, and this nib is no exception. Uh, it's got a sort of custom imprint. Uh, it says Tom Studio with some decoration. Uh, and yeah, I gotta say, I am, I am a fan of this one. And yeah, I have to say, this Tom Studio is sort of the pocket pen for the people that don't like the size of regular pocket pens. I mean, that's quite the size difference. Uh, this The cartridges have been sitting, so don't worry about the skiffing. That's just me letting the cartridges sit out for a bit. This is using the provided uh, black ink cartridge. I'm not sure what brand, um, but yeah, it's fine. Like it, uh, it's pretty viscous, so you can see it sort of does cause some skipping, but that's uh, nothing to do with the nib, I don't think. I'm actually a pretty big fan of the nib. It's got um, nice flow. Once the ink's going, you know, you don't need to use pretty much any pressure whatsoever to get a, a nice line. So uh, no baby's bottom here, that's for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, I gotta say it's a great pen if you like bigger pens, but you still want the convenience of a pocket pen. This is a great option. And then finally, the last one on this list is also, I believe, the cheapest. Maybe the Moon, Moon Man is a little cheaper, but this is definitely the easiest to acquire, I would say, because this is the Kaweco Sport. I believe this one is the Skyline Sport um, Cappuccino. It's a nice little brown color, I think that's what it's called. This one I've had in my collection for quite some time, probably around five or six years now. Um, and yeah, it's a Kawiko Sport, you know. Their nibs are sort of hit or miss, I'll give them that, but the, the, the price on these pens is pretty good for what they're worth. They're super convenient, and like if you see any sort of celebrity doing a like, you know, what's in my bag sort of video, and they have a fountain pen, it's probably going to be this. Uh, the Kawika Sport or the, the Lamb Safari, but this is definitely the most popular pocket pen by far and for good reason. Now this one is also only a cartridge filler. Um, the body I think is a really nice shape. It's just, it's, it's a fantastic design, what can I say? Time honored. Uh, Kaweco has sort of been revived uh, a few times, but as a brand they've been around forever. And this is a, an absolutely iconic design. The one thing is, 
Kaweco Sports used to be piston fillers. Uh, if Kaweco could bring back a piston filling pocket pen for the masses, uh, oh, please, uh, <laughs> let's get that going if you can. Uh, but, you know, we have to live with what we have to live with. So this one is... The Kaweco Skyline Sport. And this uh, steel Kaweco nib is sort of like a custom size. I think it's like a, a, around a number five. But I'm pretty sure they've contracted both like Bach and Yovo to make them in the past. They send them the machinery. I'm not really sure what the situation is now. But... Um, this nib right here, this one is nice. It's got a really nice pencil-like feedback, which I've always enjoyed in this pen. Um, and it's a, it's a medium steel nib. And what this pen is what, like 25, 30 bucks? Um, for the convenience this offers, I mean, you really can't beat it. And then the ink is a uh, Kaweco, their own brand of ink cartridges. Um, it's like a blue gray. I'm not really sure of the name, but uh, it's out there. That's uh, I don't have too many cartridges, so I only have <laughs> so many to pick from because, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of cartridges. I actually have tried to eyedrop this before. Um, that did kind of end in disaster with a bunch of ink burping out of the feed, but that's okay. So I was stuck with cartridges in here. Um, and yeah, I honestly can't complain. This is a Time Honored Classic, one of my favorites, probably the most accessible on this list. If you're looking for a first pocket fountain pen, I'd absolutely say the Kaweco Sport is the way to go. But if the nib is bad and it doesn't work for you, just uh, please don't give up on pens, you know? Um, try to return it or something like that, because there are really good Kawekos out there. There are really bad ones. That's my biggest knock against their brand is the inconsistency, but when they're good, they are really good. So for that reason, I think this is the great sort of intro level pocket fountain pen. Um, and then if you want to sort of move up to something like the uh, the Shone Design Pocket 6 or the Shone Small Tem, which are definitely much more expensive, but also offer um, enhanced sort of writing experience and fountain pen experience overall with the options they provide. Definitely great options. Uh, if you want a, a sort of bigger pocket pen that, uh, when writing, just feels like a, a big old normal sized pen, the Tom Studio is a great way to go. If you want another cheap option that's a cool design and also maybe want to do some calligraphy with a parallel nib, go for the Moomin and Wonkai Mini and just stick a pilot parallel nib in there. And then if you want uh, just a really cool design with some great finishes and great colors, uh, the Gravitas is the way to go. And finally, if you want something really unique, really special, uh, in a, a cool filling system with Japanese eyedropper, the Opus 88 Baby Beluga is a great option. Uh, and probably, I think, the newest pen on this list. I think this just came out a couple weeks, maybe a month ago. So yeah, that's the showcase of my personal favorite pocket pens. I've been using all these for a while. Um, the Tom Studio and the Opus 88 are recent additions, but I've also really been enjoying them. So I hope you enjoyed this little showcase. Hopefully you sort of understand where I'm coming from. Maybe it inspired you to get ex exploring into the world of pocket pens. So I just want to say thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you're going to the SF Pen Show this, this coming weekend, uh, I hope to see you there. Say hi. Uh, I'll have big old name tag says Aiden Burnell on it. So yeah, feel free to say hi. And uh, if you aren't, no worries. But uh, regardless, have a great day. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.